Welcome and aloha. I am Mark Schlav, the host of Think Tech Hawaii's Law Across the Sea program. Today we're going across the sea to the Philippines to a meeting in Metro Manila with my friend Melva Valdez. Melva is a partner in the law firm of Bello Valdez and Fernandez. And you know, many of us have friends and family in the Philippines, but we really don't know what's going on during these COVID-19 pandemic times. Uh, and I've asked Melva to help us out, to tell us what the current events are like, what the practice of law is like in the Philippines at this time. So Melva, welcome. It's good to see you. It's morning in the Philippines. It's, uh, how are you? Um, hello, Mark. Good morning from rainy Manila. It's um, <laughs> seven o'clock here. Um, it's a Tuesday morning. It's already September 15. And in your, in your hood, I know that it's afternoon, September 14. Aloha. Um, You're in the future. Uh, yeah. <laughs> um, I would start by saying that our lockdown started last March 17. Um, of this year, so it's oh, it's been six months already, two days from now, since we've been in this kind of a new normal. Um, it came like um, in the wink of an eye, everything changed. Like I know this from a personal point of view and also from a prof professional point of view because um, I don't know if I consider myself lucky because at that time, when the sudden announcement for an, um, what's this, uh, ECQ, um, what's, uh, enhanced community quarantine is how we call it here for a total lockdown. That's how the government called it. Um, I was the only partner then at the office. So practically, I was the one which, uh, who closed my law firm uh, wow. on March 17. Yes, yes. So you, I was frantic. There were lawyers. There were non-legal staff. We, but at that point, we were already um, because there were there were talks that we will be going. There were many cases um, coming up already on the statistics, although not as many as now. So um, what we decided as partners is we will go. We will report and uh, man the office on rotation. But our people will have to be reporting still, like um, everything's normal. Then suddenly we got an announcement from the administration that it'll, we will have an enhanced community quarantine, which is actually total lockdown. Only um, there will be there were no um, public transportation. Uh, only a few industries were open, essentials like food. Uh, at that point, uh, manufacturing concerns were open, so um, I had to um, make a, the close close, um, um, what's this, the very important decision to try to gather all our people and um, also secure our records and uh, our data. And then there you go. We went on um, two months, I think. We went from March 17 up to uh, end of April on a total lockdown. Everything suddenly changed. You, we had you, you You've been practicing law for how long? I've been in practice for the last 34 years, Mark. And, and where is your law firm? It's, it's, is it right in Manila? My law firm is, um, my law firm, um, is uh, one of the oldest law firms in the country. It's 69 years old. So we are, um, we are um, the fourth generation of partners of, of that firm. It used to be called the Bengzon Law Firm, Law Office. It used to uh, have its office in the central business district of Makati, but because um, when our turn came to man the office, the traffic was really very challenging in Metro Manila. You've been here, Mark, so you know how traffic um, is almost unbearable. So most of, uh, most of us partners live north of Makati. My house, for example, is 12 kilometers only from um, Makati but it could take me two hours to get to my office one way. That's when we decided about four years ago to mo move to Pasig, which is halfway, which is uh, also uh, one of the 
uh, central business districts um, in Metro Manila. By the way, Metro Manila is uh, one of the most populated um, metropolis in the Phil uh, in the Philippines. It has it has a population about of about close to 13 million as of now. And there are 16 cities com uh, composed, uh, which compose Metro Manila. Pasig is one of them. Uh, so we're still in the heart of Metro Manila. I see, I see. So, and, and so this, this shutdown happened. You were the only one in the, you were the only partner in the office. I was, in, I was the only partner. And, 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 and you had to get everything organized. And, and you've done that, and, the, and you're within the Metro Manila area. Yes. Uh, uh, because all these cities are within that. And, and is, is this shutdown for all of Manila? Is it all of the Philippines? Or tell me, uh, what's the, you know, for, for, for example, in Hawaii, we uh, uh, have our, anybody that comes to Hawaii has to quarantine for 14 days. And right now we're in a 14 day lockdown of the whole city of Honolulu. Uh, not other cities in the state, but so how, how is Metro uh, Manila compared mm -hmm. to everywhere else in the Philippines? Um, during the first lockdown, the entire Luzon Island was put on total lockdown. And that came uh, on, um, that went on in fact for two months. Then um, little by little, um, some areas opened up, but then the concentration of cases at, up to now is in Metro Manila. So for some time, we were on a modified enhanced community quarantine, so to speak. After two months, the government tried to ease up because it has to balance between economy also and health. There was, um, there was so much, um, what's this? Um, talk. We have an interagency task force tasked by the administration to handle this pandemic in um, this country. So it's composed of um secretaries from the department of health from from the dt from the department of trade and industry from certain um business sectors so for some time we went on a modified um enhanced community quarantine meaning there were um added industries that were, that opened up but still law was not part of it at that point lawyer well, wasn't part of it Law, law was not part of it or was part yeah, of it? Yeah, was not part of it yet. Yeah, so uh, for two months, we were not, we could not go to our office. Oh, uh, wow. Yeah, for two months, we were not able to go to our office. We suddenly had to shift um, um, to uh, a work from home mode for everyone. Uh, we, were, we managed to keep our people intact. Some firms, in fact, some um, industries um, started um, furloughing employees. Of course, it's the natural course of events. But luckily for us, we were able to keep our people, um, both legal and non-legal, and working from home was the mode for two months. So all, all, of, your, all of your staff, all of the partners, everybody is working from home. Yes. Are still even now? Is that is that correct? You're, everybody uh, is, uh, are, as of now, we are allowed. Mark, as of now, Mark, we are allowed to um, to operate on a fifty percent capacity at any given um, time. All right. Of course, we have to have in place strict safety protocols. But since um, how do I term it? Since um, it will be safer for everyone, for our people. We find it safer for everyone to um, to uh, be working from home still. So our we have some kind of a blended kind of a working arrangement now. Uh, we rotate our people. That they report only twice a week to the office, even uh, our non-legal staff. For our lawyers, we encourage them actually to work from home. And um, slowly we are adjusting to that kind of a uh, situation. I go to the office uh, twice a week if I can, because I have to check also. Uh, I have to check the, the, the physical office if protocols and disinfection is being done. Some with my, uh, and also my other partners do that. Sometimes there are uh, documents that need to be signed. Although since I live close by, 
an, uh, an alternative way of doing it is we have uh, messengers who have motorcycles. This is only in the Philippines, Mark. So yeah. they bring the documents to my house, which is about from 12 kilometers. I'm now down to two kilo to about three kilometers down from the office. So I'm the nearest, and my house is the nearest uh, among the partners to our office. So documents sometimes are brought to my house, but then when there was a surge again of cases, um, I thought it's kind of reckless to be allowing people to, even if they don't enter the house, to, um, to be coming very often here. So I thought that um, it would be best if I go to the office on um, um, about once or twice a week just to sign their certain document because I practice um, commercial law and um, we're just starting to do e-signatures. But still, a lot of agencies are still would still want the physical signatures for 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 board resolutions, for documents, for secretary certificates. So, um, although during the pandemic, at the height of the pandemic, we were allowed to submit um, documents to regulatory agencies um, using e-sig e-signatures. So right right now, okay, you you've been in lockdown or in some form of lockdown or since. Uh, March and and in in the United States and in Hawaii we talk about uh, wearing masks and social distancing and that type of thing. How are things today? What are you folks doing in the Philippines, especially in in Metro Manila? Uh, are, are we? Is there concern? Should we be concerned for our friends and family there? Uh, wh what's the status right now? Well, um, you know, Mark, um, to be candid, the Philippines um, is a mix of um, the, the, the very rich and the very poor. You, um, we have some kind of a big gap in so far as that is concerned. I think that's one reason why this, um, the, the, it's very hard to control the, the to, uh, to flatten the curve, so to speak. But in so far as um, in so far as um, protocols are concerned to curb the pandemic or to contain the pandemic, there are strict regulations um, in so far as wearing of masks is concerned, and also face shields. We oh, cannot okay. go out these days, and our face shields should cover our full face. Really? That just oh. ha yeah. Okay. Um, I used to. <laughs> I used to, you know, you know me as somebody who really loves to dress up, you know. So even I even have fashionable masks, which are no longer allowed here. They require surgical masks. Oh. <laughs> or, there are masks, I remember there are masks which I even bought from the U.S. which have valves because I could, I, I felt I couldn't breathe with the surgical mask or even the N95. But then the establishments will not allow you if you are not using surgical mask and you are not using full face shields wow. so that's a requirement in fact one time two weeks ago just to give you an anecdote i went to my um i went to my office my mask was the usual half face uh, i thought and then the, the 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 security guard at the building didn't let me in until i changed my mask <laughs> So wow. that's, uh, we have to contain it because, you know, uh, we don't really know um, whether the person behind us or in, behind us or beside us is actually um, asymptomatic positive. You know, in, we here, don't have in, mass in, testing here. Here, here in the United States uh, and like in Hawaii, uh, political leaders have come under some heat. Uh, our mayor, our governor and the, the president. Uh, what's it like in the Philippines? Is there, I mean, how are the leaders doing? I mean, who are the leaders in the Philippines? Well, and what the are they doing? Agency, and how are they doing? The lead agency here is the Department of Health, of course. We call it the Department of Health here in uh, for this pandemic. Um, their claim is that they were, they're doing everything. I'll, I'll put it that way. Uh, the claim is they're doing everything to curve this pandemic. But um, I would describe it that they may be doing their best, but their best is not good enough. Mm. So we end up private citizens, private companies, 
law firms that matter, doing our um, own protection. At the end of the day, we uh, we have now have a, we now have a mindset. I now have a mindset that I am a positive, so I should be protecting myself not only for myself but also for other people who I come come in contact with. So it sounds like uh, people are relying more on themselves and there is not, uh, from what I hear, I mean, it's very similar to what we have here. We, we, we yeah. have a bit of dissatisfaction um, and a lot of grumbling. Uh, of course, nobody could predict and nobody, nobody knows what to do maybe, but uh, there is a lot of concern that the government here in the United States and Hawaii and even in our city, uh, sometimes we don't know what we're doing. There's a lot of disputes. Um, let me let me let me let me ask you, Ken. Uh, if I wanted to come to the Philippines now, could I come? I mean, if no, no. And, uh, the only um, the only inbound passengers allowed to the um, to come into the Philippines now until now, this has not been lifted yet. the The rule has not been lifted yet. Are returning Filipinos? Are foreigners who have long-term visa, meaning they have, when you say long-term visa, they have permanent residency visa, not working visas, or those who are married to Filipinas or Filipinos. In and fact, um, I have clients who uh, have who are who, who are um, residents of their companies here, but who have been caught in a situation wherein they couldn't come back yet. So you you you're talking about your clients now. I mean, how how are you communicating with your clients? I mean, you can't go to the office. Are you doing a lot of Zoom and virtual type type meetings with clients? But it sounds like you're still busy. Yes, uh, yes. So, you so, know, Mark, this is something yeah. that's I consider it. Um, I'm I, I am blessed. We are blessed. My firm is blessed because even during at the height of ECQ, I was very busy. I can speak for myself because uh, I was handling accounts which are in the manufacturing business and it was business as usual for them. Their factories were are outside Metro Manila. So we were still doing work. And then um, there was one client who was fast enough to pivot its business. And during the height of the pandemic, because we were short of um, PPEs, especially surgical masks at that time, last March. There was a shortage of masks here, but we were uh, there was one client of mine who was able to work out with the DTI and the um, the, part, the Department of Trade and Industry and the Department of Health that um, the government will assist the uh, here assist this company to uh, quickly um, import equipment and um, pivot to manufacture of face of uh, surgical masks. So at the height of the pandemic, in a span of about three weeks, I was able to package um, a contract in so far as um, the manufacture of surgical mask um, is concerned. So it kept me busy and it kept me mentally alert. It kept me mentally sane during those trying times because we were, I was, we were all adjusting then. Even my husband, Ricky, was also adjusting then. In fact, he couldn't work at home. So he goes to the office every day. <laughs> and, yeah, and he's also a lawyer who I know. So yeah. and he, he's, he, he's busy too. So he is not as busy as, um, as I am because he's into tax. And for uh, the longest time, um, most of our agencies are actually on total lockdown. There was no movement. So we couldn't get approvals. In fact, most agents, government agencies now are still on skeletal force and we communicate with them via online. Uh, also uh, through emails, we do e-filings and then followed by some agencies now accept um, hard copies. So we send them the following day. But uh, for example, Securities and Exchange Commission in fact still um, where is, is still working by um, on uh, via emails queries and filings are done by emails and also um, hard copies are sent by an accredited courier because okay, so, 
So, so most of your most of the business is is all uh, done virtual, and you're you're not meeting with people. Although I know, you know, my own experience in, in the Philippines and Manila, you know, interaction, personal interaction, is is uh, a cultural uh, sure. strength uh, of Filipinos and just doing business. Uh, sure in in the Philippines uh, you know um, is there is there something in your culture uh, or history of the Philippines that uh, is helping you folks during this period of time is that, I mean I, I hear you talking about how um, you know difficult times and you're, you're busy which is helpful is there is there something else in culture Philippine culture history that's helpful what 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 is yeah this? I think it's our what we call the Bayanihan system um the spirit of cooperation among people the goodness of people came out that's why during the height of this and until now um you would see um people even they, if they're not rich helping our frontliners meaning our what we call you call them essential workers meaning your hospital workers, health workers. We call them here our frontliners. So doctors, all in the medical field. So we, um, in our own little way, help them get their own um, protective equipment gears, um, food, because they sometimes they couldn't go out anymore because they have to attend to COVID patients. So, and even among us people, you know, um, Sad to say, sometimes the poor people can't rely anymore on um, stimulus. You call it stimulus in your jurisdiction. So the rich are the the more um, the well-to-do or even the um, middle-income group are trying very much um, their best to help the poor. Like in my in my area, in my hood, in my village, in my um, subdivision. Like we contribute every week to give to our garbage collectors. <laughs> so this is helping um, the Philippines a lot. This is one thing that's going um, good for all of us because uh, it's so easy. In fact, um, Mark, um, um, uh, so I um, even send PPEs to some of my classmates who are essential workers in the mainland. Because oh. I heard, yeah, because I heard we have a lot here. Because um, most designers, in fact, uh, pivoted to doing protect uh, PPEs, and I understand that some of my from some of my friends in the mainland who are working in hospitals that they don't have this um, um, personal protective equipment, basically the the uh, the, the suits. So um, I I I, um, I have sent a few to some of my doctor friends in California. Well, so th that's maybe a Filipino um, yeah. feeling family, and uh, is that right? I mean, uh, it, we're all together, and that's sure. that's something positive. Mm -hmm. uh, what what else? I mean, I mean, every time when I walk around my neighborhood, uh, even during these very weird times, I I feel somewhat thankful that I can walk in a beautiful place, and. Uh, even though things are crazy, uh, I, I, I really like that. Is there things like that in the Philippines for you personally? Or how yes. are you doing personally? How are your feet? What, what are you feeling? Is there things that lift you up despite what's going on? Um, I call it sometimes, you know, um, I think of it um, in a very positive way uh, for this, that this is a better normal. Our environment, um, Mark, especially Metro Manila, you know how um, the level of pollution here before. Mm. But when I first, after two months, I visit, I was brave enough to visit again my office. I was the first one to visit the office. I'm from the window of my, um, from the glass window of my, um, of my room, everything was so green. And I could see the smallest building from as far as my eyes could see. So this is one thing that, that this, this lockdown has done. You know, it has cleared the air. And walking around here, all the plants in my garden are, in, are very lush, so to speak, which I never saw before. <laughs> and we could walk around also like you um, in the streets here where I live. Um, everything is so fresh. 
especially in the mornings. Although I must say that um, according to a friend last night, um, people are also trying to um, are also trying to act as normal as possible for economic reasons. So a friend of mine, a lawyer friend of mine was um, in our Viber group was saying that it's like there's no pandemic anymore. Traffic was bad again because people are going back, trying to go back to I see. From I normal. See. Because as you said, the Philippines is more of, um, um, of a person-to-person -person interaction kind of a culture. It's the thing that um, that I struggle with for some time also. You know me, I'm very sociable, right? Yeah. <laughs> so, well, let's, let's, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take a little de detour and talk okay. about a relationship. Uh-huh. That's between the Philippines and the United States. Now, I mean, I have so many good friends in the Philippines, but I feel like there, it has cooled a little bit. Not, not, not between my friends, but just the countries. Is that the feeling in the Philippines too? Or what, are the Fili what do Filipinos feel about the current relationship with the United States? In so far as relationship is concerned, um, uh, I think you are right, it's a bit cold because of the leadership of both. Although if you'd ask me, your leader and my leader actually act in the same way. <laughs> Sorry, I, uh, yeah, but you know, there's some kind of a, but then of late, I would say that uh, in my own analysis of the situation, there is, um, this is how the U.S. and the Philippines have been for the longest time also I, in my observation. There's some kind of a love-hate relationship. Hmm. Well, I, I <laughs> like the love relationship better. Uh, I, like? I, I like the love relationship. Of course, of course. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, okay, we have about a minute left. What, what are your thoughts? What are, where are we going? Where will you be in the Philippines? How, how do things look for the future? In, in the, with the, we got a, just about a minute left. Give me your thoughts. Uh, my takeaway from this uh, pandemic is that um, from a personal point of view, I've learned to um, um, value life more, that life is fragile. Every day is a gift. That's an old cliche, but now it's very, it's a reality. So um, it's been brought I, home. Correct. You have to be, I, 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 I'm always grateful every time I wake up in the morning, I say my grace and give thanks to him, to, uh, to my creator. And from a professional point of view, I never thought that work from home really works. Okay. So it really well, works. And so um, this pandemic also has, um, has taught people or has, um, has um, changed the working climate for all kinds of business, lawyering um, included, that we, meet, we don't need to be um, physically present in, the, in, the, in an office. We can have a home office and continue working, especially if you are, a, of, if you are an M&A lawyer or a securities lawyer. The only thing that's still a work in progress in so far as the Philippines is concerned or is for litigation because e-hearing is still just starting. Although our Supreme Court has already mandated all courts to conduct e-hearings, but we have an issue in so far as connectivity is concerned. We have an issue in so far as um, hardware and software is concerned for some courts. Although some courts have also started their e-hearings already, even the Supreme Court conducted already an e-hearing. But for commercial lawyers and other, um, uh, and, uh, for business lawyers, uh, for that matter, work from home works. Well, you know, and the other thing is that we, th this has given us an opportunity to talk to each other uh, when we might not have talked for a while. True. And so uh, I'm very thankful that we got together uh, this afternoon in Hawaii and this morning in Manila. And so, uh, Melva, 
thank you. I, I, it was very nice to see you, very nice to talk with you. Uh, hopefully, uh, we'll meet in person sometime, but I, I am glad we've had this opportunity to see each other today. So, aloha. Aloha, and thank you very much. I felt honored to be um, one of your guests in this um, unprecedented times. Um, because uh, I see you sometimes only on Facebook, although I haven't been on Facebook also for some time lately. <laughs> so uh, thank you very much for giving me this opportunity to share what, um, what we are experiencing here in this part of the world. We are in fact, um, your, uh, Hawaii is one of our closest um, neighbors in the United States. Uh, um, and one of my favorite um, states also, because um, it's practically very Filipino in some ways. There's so many Filipinos, there's a huge Filipino community there. Um, migrants for that matter, uh, mostly from the North, if I may say so. So uh, thank you very much, Mark. Um, it was a pleasure talking to you today. I didn't what? mind waking up, no problem with me. <laughs> <laughs> what, what is Filipino word like is aloha. What would uh, Mabuhay. 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 It's nice to see you. Aloha. Nice to see you. Oh, thank you.